I just left the video for my daughter, Josie, who is not at camp. She's not, um, you know, visiting friends. She's not away in college. She's seven and separated from her mom. This is what happens when false and malicious allegations are made through the New York City child welfare line. This is what happens when we don't have a way to make sure that that, that Gladys Carrion and, and, and Mayor de Blasio and the ACS staff that's in charge of a three billion dollar budget. We have no way to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. We have no way of making sure that they're helping parents. We have no way to make sure that the, any of the allegations are true or false. We must have a federal monitor. We must have body cameras for social workers. We have to have some way to keep these people accountable, to keep them honest. Because when you have over $400,000, and that's about what it is when there are 10,000 foster kids and $3 billion budget, like New York City has, that lends itself to a lot of potential corruption, a lot of bribing, a lot of things. The money does not go to children. This we know for sure for three reasons. One, in her most recent testimony to the New York City Council, Gladys Carrion admitted, admitted that she doesn't do all she's supposed to do. She knows that she's supposed to do the educational stability plan. She doesn't. So foster kids in New York City, Good luck, but you're not graduating. She knows that she is supposed to spend more money on preventative services and reuniting parents, but she doesn't. 20% of the budget goes to help parents. 20%. But guess what? They're getting grant money, close to a billion, that's basically being fraudulently used, that's being you know, misdirected, that's, that's being misappropriated. Foster care is a perfect place to launder money. So we have to, as taxpayers, we have to, as moms, we have to, as concerned citizens, we have to, just as people, do a better job of making sure that the people that we put in place are doing their job. And we know from Zamir Perkins, we know from Miles Dobson, and we know from Josie, that they're not doing their jobs. But I can't absolve the media. This is, this is your fault. Because you've played such a big role in not reporting. I understand how difficult it is to get information from ACS. Oh, trust me. I'm a parent. I'm also a journalist. I know how hard it is to get information. I was not even told of my own hearings. I wasn't given any information about what's going on with my kid or my case. I haven't heard from a case planner in over a year. According to New York City, I'm supposed to have one judge. There have been five judges and a referee. We're supposed to have one case planner because according to ACS, anytime a child or a case has, has more than one case planner, the odds of the child going home are pretty much non-existent. So the fact that we've had 12 case planners, 12 that I know of, there may be more now, unacceptable. But I have reached out to several media outlets. Before you all started writing, and thank you for writing now, but you started writing after me contacting you for over three years. I pretty much have fed you the stories over the past six months, so thank you for reading them. But when I've been contacting you to tell you, hey, look, I've discovered this, here's this thing, here's something going on, you know, or when you allow the mayor to tell you, this is, oh, this is about some bad parent, well, you don't ask questions like, if there have been five calls to the CPS on Zamir's mother, what were the calls about? What services did you provide? For example, I know a mother who is a domestic violence victim like me. She's had over 60, 60, that's a six and a zero, fake calls called in. So don't give me that, oh, would well, this family is known to CPS. That means nothing, nothing. What should be told you to you is whether or not the calls were false, malicious, or unfounded. If they're unfounded, they don't matter. You can't hold that against the parent because Everybody gets to call and pretend that a child is being hurt. And what the mayor said at the press conference recently, that he'd rather we take the children, is exactly the problem. Because every time a child is removed, there's a financial incentive put in place by Bill Clinton under the 1997 Adoption Safe Families Act. Horrible act. It didn't focus on helping families. It focused on getting children out of foster care so that gay people and other people could adopt the child faster. We know that African-American children linger in foster care and are very rarely adopted. So what's the rush? Josie has a loving mom. She has other relatives that want her. 
there's no excuse for it. Plus, the law says if a child is in kinship care, they don't need to file for termination of placement, I mean, termination of parental rights. They did that because they're angry that I uncovered their scam. They're angry that I refuse to be silent while my daughter and I are being separated for false and malicious allegations. They are angry that I have managed to keep this case alive when they try to push it under the rug in six weeks. They're angry because I started writing about my experience not knowing that there are thousands of me, that I'm just literally one of thousands. I can call out four moms right now, one who is a registered nurse, one who is a veteran school teacher, one who's an attorney, and one who's a veteran journalist. I'm that journalist, obviously. All of us didn't know each other. We're all domestic violence victims. Every single one of us is fighting ACS for our children. The most trusted people, most trusted titles, fighting ACS for our children. I can tell you that I did everything they asked. In fact, I, I asked for half the services, and they did nothing. For example, there's a court order for visits. We didn't get to see each other. There's a court order saying they must re retroactively reimburse me for coming back and forth the thousand miles to court. I haven't seen a penny. There's a court order that said that my daughter Josie and I are supposed to have family therapy once a week. They told the people who have my daughter that if they brought the child to family therapy, that they would stop the payments. Josie has never come to family therapy, ever. That's a violation of a court order. Someone should be in jail right now. There's no wonder there's a grand jury investigation. No wonder there's about to be a federal probe. No wonder I'm calling for um, caseworkers and, and social workers to have body cameras. You're trusted by us to keep these children safe, and these children are dying. You're lying to the press and making it seem like there's just one kid named Zamir Perkins, but there are over 88 children on average a year, according to the Department of Investigation, the, according to um, former comptroller John Liu, according to tons and tons of documents that are in with, within New York City's own agency. This is not information I'm finding myself. This is information that you guys have taken the time to put together in reports, but no one is being held accountable. We have to get rid of the Department of Investigation. Fire everybody. They're horrible. They don't do anything. They pretend they are supposed to investigate. They do audits of like 10 cases when there are 10,000 cases. Even still, they find horrible things. ACS. I am very pro CPS. There are some children who need to be protected. Mine is not one. Well, she is now that you've been neglecting her in foster care. But I am definitely against people who abuse children like ACS is doing. When you take the money from the child, that's abuse. When you keep the child away from their parent just because you don't like the mother or you want to punish the mother or, or teach the bitch her place, as one of the uh, workers said to me, in my case, one of the caseworkers lied to the child's school, my child's school and told them that I was suffering from a mental illness that made parenting impossible. Jessica Amy Page, who is an um, ACS family court attorney, lied to my child's school and told them that she was my child's attorney. She told them that I was in Rikers Island and that's why my child was sent into foster care. I mean, can you imagine an attorney that's licensed in the state of New York? can do something like that and keep a job, we need to look at the 18B program where my former attorney, Daniel G. Robles, forged my signature to take my case, my complicated case, from a judge and give it to a referee. You know, I had to get a hand handwriting analysis person involved. It, it, you didn't need it. When you look at it, it's very clear. Daniel wrote this. But imagine these attorneys that are so confident in breaking the law that they would do that. Someone's going to go to jail, either in my case or some other case, because the truth of the matter is ACS is a perfect place to launder money. ACS is a terrible place for a child to go. And ACS is a cash cow for the state of New York. We have to do better. Investigate these cases. We have to make sure that Josie gets home safely and that other Josies get home safely. We need to start looking at how many children get impregnated while in foster care in New York. We need to look at how many children are abused inside and sexually trafficked. We need a hotline for those kids to call when they need help. Because as they speak, they're sitting in the children's center and they're getting psychotropic drugs and medicated and booty juiced. They're getting t 
told that they don't matter and that no one's going to listen to them. They're in a facility that doesn't even have a valid permit. We need to do better. And I pledge to lead the way. And that's why I'm trying to pass Josie's Law. We are going to tie these loopholes up. For example, a lot of these kids will leave foster care and not be able to get an apartment, bringing them back into the shelter system. Why? Because their identities are stolen by the very people we put in place to take care of them. So I'm asking as part of Josie's Law, for every foster care kid in the state of New York, and hopefully across the country, as soon as they go into foster care, they should have a credit freeze on their credit. No more robbing the identities of these foster kids and robbing them financially. How dare you do that to them? You sick, sick person. So Josie's Law is going to help a lot of people, and mostly it's going to hopefully help my daughter. But in the end, you're going to go to jail because we're going to find you. There are too many other parents out here, concerned citizens out here, attorneys who are sick of it out here. There are too many people who are going to start combing through the financial records of New York City ACS to find out why it has a $3 billion budget, nearly double the budget of the Secret Service. There are too many people paying attention now. There are too many people at work. So you're going to jail. Your union can't stop it. The money can't stop it. You're going to jail. And we'll all be here to write about it, to make sure that people know what's going on. On behalf of Miles Dobson, on behalf of Tiana Mills, on behalf of Zymir Perkins and all the other children, on behalf of my daughter Josie, how dare you be the person that would take from a child. You're going to go to jail. I promise.